boom chakalaka. Yes, Lucas yeah. and Liesel. <laughs> yeah, I, so as I just told you uh, in the seconds before, I would love to talk about coaching with you today. Also knowing that you, that you work as a coach. And uh, the fundamental question I would like to ask today is what, what the fuck is coaching? Um, what does a coach actually do? And how can we think about that? Because usually when I, when I try to get clear on this and I talk to this, talk about this with people, uh, the answers are either very complex or they are very one dimensional. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually think it's not that complex. And when we have a, have a clear map, um, I think we can even talk about, so what, what makes your coaching unique? What makes my coaching unique? But also how are they similar? Because in the end, I think we, we, we do really similar things. And mm. uh, at the same time, we can distinguish each other. Mm. And there are differences, yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of my goal. Does that make sense to you as a rough orientation? Mm, it's fantastic. And it's actually so perfect because actually just yesterday, I published something on my own page about the difference between coaching, counseling, mentoring, and consulting. You want to share those distinctions? I hope I can remember them. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, but... I hope you wrote them. I did, I did. Um, and, and it's not just from my own thinking. This comes from other people's thinking. And then I had to think carefully for myself as well. So what, what is it that I do? Because I do a, a mix of some of those things, not only just mm -hmm. coaching. And so <clears throat> if I think about coaching and counseling, both ask questions. While mentoring and consulting is more about telling or giving the answers. Mm -hmm. And then counseling and mentoring. No, counseling and consulting are very much past based. Like what, what went wrong in the past to get us to where we are? And let's fix that. Let's do something about it. Okay. Whereas coaching and mentoring is more future-based, we're going towards something now. How are we going to get there? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the the way you you were thinking about that. Yes. So it's almost like you can draw a little cross, you know, and you can yeah. put four squares next to each other, yeah. and. Yeah, so that, that I must just make clear again, that, that was not a model that I came up with. It came from mm -hmm. a coaching course that I was on. And I went and thought very carefully, so where is it that I fit in? What do I love doing? How does it fit in with my strengths? Because we each coach or consult or counsel mm -hmm. from our strengths. We can't leave them out. And, and therefore, I've had to do a little bit of thinking. I wrote it down for my clients to say yes yes what so, i do so what is it what is it that you are doing i do a mix of mm -hmm. um uh, counseling the therapy part where we look at mm -hmm. the past how did it shape you how did it form you and how did you get to where you are with this problem mm -hmm. and then when we've solved some of that we can go into um coaching okay so now where do you want to be rather than here and we go forward with asking like you know all the things that coaching involves rather than therapy and then i also do a bit of mentoring so like basically I, you just do whatever the fuck you want and don't the, really worry okay, about what? it uh yes uh, with the exception of i don't do consulting i don't mm -hmm. tell people what to do mm -hmm. consulting is more like i'm the expert i'll tell you what to do and that's what's going to get you there i don't do that that part that is not part of my strengths so i don't do it yeah can you can you allow me to share the screen yes just... oh i didn't do that in the beginning just hang on because that's important for me there you I go draw shit. <laughs> uh. let's see your shit. <laughs> This has never happened. 
It's not wanting to. Or... No, it doesn't seem like it. Let me try again. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, so basically the, the thing you were describing is this two by two mm -hmm. of future, yes. past, ask, tell. And yes. kind of actually all of them having certain level of overlap. Yes. So in one way it is, no, it is impossible to separate them cleanly because there is this overlap but um, some have more and some have less overlap. Yes, yes, that's right. Because, I mean, because basically the, the overlap is being here and now together and communicating. <laughs> I love that, yes. Yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And that would actually be, again, the very foundational skills that you need for, for all of them, that you can't get around. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think if I think about this in consulting, I've seen the worst communication sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's very, very possible. <laughs> if we think sometimes like, of a, a, like a, a, a doctor, I don't want to make them wrong or anything, but some doctors, surgeons, whatever, you know, they, they tell you, this is your problem, you, this is what we're going to do to fix it, and mm -hmm. they don't care about the back and forth. Yeah. like listening or That's anything so yeah yeah mm. and then again where you talked about communication you know good communication skills in some coaching methodologies um, and some coaching schools and certifications you know like a formal like here's a stamp of approval from a, an organization there is the, in their eyes there should be no overlap you cannot mentor you can't counsel you can't consult you coach you ask questions and let the client come to their own wisdom yeah i mean obviously that makes sense from a perspective of oh we're certifying somebody it's like you have to be really clear but yeah. from my understanding of us being humans that's a really stupid idea <laughs> yeah just because if if i look at it as we are here and now and we're in communication, then depending on where you're at, what you need right now will change. Mm. And there are certain places where just me asking future oriented questions will actually not help you. Mm. And if I then stick to that, and that's like the only thing I'm allowed to do, but what do you want? Like, I completely stunt my own possibilities and I become horribly unflexible. Yeah. So th that's what I mean by that's stupid. And actually, I mean, this, this is kind of a nice segue into some of the things I've been thinking about because mm, I've been thinking about this as, so what is coaching? Mm. And I've, I think there are a few fundamental distinctions that make a lot of sense and that that are really helpful for me to think about what am I doing as a coach um, and I came up with this as a basic model that I'm gonna fill out good um, and uh, basically I want to distinguish between two things I want to distinguish between and I'm going to do it like that there is the outer layer there's a kind of these outer pieces of this drawing, mm -hmm. and there is the inner layer. So these places, right. and I think they are both important for coaching. So if we look at coaching purely as a results, uh, action oriented meth methodology, which I think a lot of people do, future results. Yeah. How do I help you to get towards future results? That's I it. think from that perspective to describe coaching is really, really, really simple because it's basically three questions. Mm -hmm. all, all of results, future, outer coaching is like, number one, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Number two, what are your options to get there? And number three, how do you implement that? 
if I look from a results oriented perspective on coaching, that's everything I do. I'm right. like, okay, so what do you want? And then I can have all sorts of kind of maps and models on how to flesh out that. What do you want? It can be, let's try to get to the needs in there. It can be, let's make it smart. It can be, let's uh, make it sensory based, it can, whatever your mm. idea of what the best, what do you want is, mm -hmm. you can then flesh that out. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's the question of what do you want? Right. It, and I think it can also go from what do you want in the future to what do you want from this conversation with me? Mm -hmm. how, how does this support you? Yes. Um, then based on what do you want, the next question is like, okay, so how do you get there? <laughs> and I think a lot of times what the coach does there is to actually go, okay, what are your options to get there? Because most people are then stuck in, mm -hmm. in, oh, I've tried this, but it doesn't work. So it's all about like finding new options, finding new perspectives. And I actually think this is also the place where um, purely asking question can sometimes be limiting because if I have certain knowledge and then I'm getting maybe closer to a little bit of uh, mentoring or mm -hmm. counseling, consulting, because I know certain things that I can suggest and then you can make your own decisions based on that because maybe you don't see certain options. Um, so that's then that. And once we figured out an option and kind of made a decision, or not we, but you, uh, based on w which of these options is the best for you, the question is, okay, so now how do you implement that? And again, we can then have all sorts of methodologies that are like, this is the best way to implement things, which I think are usually not that smart because the best way to implement that will be different for every person. Exactly. Um, but then once you have actually implemented something, we will get to, okay, what do you want now? <laughs> and then, right. And yes. then we get to, okay, what are your options to get there and how do you implement that? Right. Yeah. So if I look at it as results oriented coaching, outer coaching, that, that's really, I think, what it is. The basics of it. Yes, yes. So when you implement, just like a little thought in my mind. So when you've implemented, you've been to step number three and it may or may not have given you what you wanted in the first place. Right. Yes. So now you've got information and then you can go again to number one. It's like, OK, now that I've got this result which mm -hmm. may not be the exact exact result i was hoping for but i've got a result mm -hmm. okay now now that i've got this what do i want now do i want to try again and you know different options or whatever but it mm -hmm. it will always implementing something will always lead to a result yeah whatever the result is yeah okay so does does that as the makes kind sense. of out mm -hmm. makes sense good yeah. maybe just as a as one way of looking at that, because I think these pictures really help to just get clarity on things. For sure, um, yes. boing, boing. The, the way I would draw this is, this is you, very pretty. Mm -hmm. um, the first question would then be, what do you want? What's the goal? Right. The second questions are, so how can you get there? What are the options? Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of the number two. And number three will then be like, okay, once we have decided on this one, how do you implement it? What are the actual steps? How do you stick to it? Et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Nice. Hmm. That's kind of the outer layer of it. Right. So all the obstacles that we may come up with, whether it's in our mind, in our emotions, mm -hmm. in our actual physical trying to implement, that all falls under step three. Step three, and I think step two. So if I basically started moving with this one and I noticed like, nope, this is not possible because of something that's, very real, then it's like, okay, what are my other options? And I can change my plan. Or if I notice like here, there is an op, there is a problem here, I can maybe figure out a way to get around it. And that would then be again, implementation sticking with it. Okay. 
Okay. Maybe I also notice the closer I get to this, actually the worse I'm doing. And the question is, do I really want this? But <laughs> that happens. It, it does happen. <laughs> but yeah. again, all of this is still very outwards focused. Right. So the, the, the second layer of coaching that I would really like to distinguish and that is also where, where I'm drawn most with my energy is Okay, so I, somebody comes to me for coaching and with some people, it's almost impossible to figure out so what do you really want? Mm -hmm. Like even that first question is not really clear. Yeah. And I think to then just say, well, all I can do or uh, all my skill set allows me to do as a coach is to just stick to that until we find something. It actually means I'm very skillless mm -hmm. and actually not very graceful. So I think one of the things is that we then can kind of come from this outer layer of coaching and move towards the inside mm -hmm. of a person. In my drawing, that would be this, this is the stick figure. Right. But we're not just a stick figure that moves in the world. We also have an inner world. And I think oftentimes it's that switch from what do you want to do to, okay, what is happening in your inner world as it is relating to the goal, to the options, et cetera. And that would be this, this second layer that I want to talk about. So, Let's maybe start with this. Somebody comes and we can't really figure out what they, what they want. Maybe they want two things, but, they're, but it's like, I really want this, but I'm super scared of it. So I don't really want it, but I really want it, but I'm super scared of it. Right. So for me, this would be an indicator of something that I would place here, which is basically, shoop. This is supposed to be kind of like a pizza slice. Um, <sighs> This is very pretty right here. Um, good pizza slice there. <laughs> and it would be C for me. Somebody has different motivations. Mm -hmm. Because I think all of us have certain things we want, but we also have certain things we're scared of. Yep. And there's always this push and pull. And I think one of the things that we have to be able to do and this is not just something that is purely future oriented or purely results oriented but actually looking internally is what are your motivations yeah another example could be we figured out what somebody wants and then when we are like so how what are your options to get there they are like there are none in, in their perspective of the world there there is no way to get there Right. Which to me would indicate this second place. Let's see if this pizza slice. Oh, wow. This one's pretty. Um, which would for me point towards something that I think in, in a lot of coaching terminology could be, could be called like beliefs. Um, identifications. So we all have certain beliefs that may keep us from even seeing options, from even, mm -hmm. from even considering certain paths. We have limiting beliefs that like, I'm not smart enough for that. I'm not, mm -hmm. um, I really wanna make it as a coach, but I'm not that good. So not sure I can. Yeah. I really mm -hmm. wanna create this, this company or make this project work, but nobody likes me. Like it's all of these beliefs we have and to actually make the real step from what do I want to what are the options, I sometimes have to go inside and consider what beliefs are there, what stuff is there. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we have some options, but then it's really difficult to figure out how can I implement that, which would lead me to my last place here. Oh, wow, I'm getting more skilled at the pizza slice. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the coloring is deteriorating, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not one of my strengths um which, you you can have that excuse <laughs> I, I, I we can talk about that at another point in time um, but coming to this 
as is actually the place to get from my options to my implementation is about knowing my resources and strengths because the only way to 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 sustainably implement and really make the steps is if they're built on my resources and strengths yeah. and if they are built on those so this is again some something that figuring out what the real options are and how to implement them will mean going inside and figuring out like how do you work mm. how are you meant to to work what are your work zones what are your what are you good at which yeah. is not just future oriented it's not just results oriented it's actually internally oriented it and is yes maybe even though i'm using my strengths and resources i don't really stick to it like i implement a little bit but i don't really stick to it which will then again lead to the question like is this really my motivation am i doing this project for the right reasons why am i why am i into this mm -hmm. so it's basically there is this outer layer of taking these steps but again and again we will have to take the step inside to move forward and to figure out like what is the energy fueling the whole thing and how is it connected to my core myself as we talked about in our last video mm -hmm. and and me as a coach i need at least from my perspective i should be proficient at both of these layers i should be proficient at guiding people here but i also need some sort of tools and skills to take this step inside yeah so that's kind of my first drawing does that make sense to you any remarks any questions mm, it makes a lot of sense do you mind taking that little bottom thing off the the, the little, oh, yeah of so course. i just see the words again resources and strengths it absolutely makes a lot of sense to me it's nice and clear it's um we may in your experience or in your thinking um could it happen that we have you know, the motivation piece number C, say, it could also come up, you know, where B is at the moment. It's not mm -hmm. always that they fix there, but the, it's just pieces of the internal world that will need to be yeah. taken care of in this journey. It could be here, it could be there, it could be there, but those pieces are there. Yeah. And in I, other words, like uh, before I start taking action, I go like, oh, oh I don't I know my option, but oof, I, I don't want to do that because it's just like, it's not who I am. I, and I need to look at my motivation for before I've even implemented a thing. Yeah. Also what you're describing could be described. Yeah, I can do that, but it's fucking draining. Yeah, I don't want to do it. Yeah, or I can do it, but I'm actually scared. Yes. Now, there's a part of me that's scared. Yes. So, so maybe this will get even a little bit clearer so from my perspective the way i'm trying to look at this last time we talked about paths we talked about this mm. this model of so we have a self and we have paths that are oops, that are um like more or less burdened or healthy so for me a lot of this inner world again has to do with paths so yes. we we had it um with uh, a is about like beliefs and i think on one way in one way to look at beliefs is actually that certain parts of me have beliefs of my abilities and they they will see the world a certain way yeah. and when they are active we will see the world and for instance our goal through the eyes of these parts. <laughs> I love these drawings. <laughs> so suddenly the world looks like that. Or right. if, if we try to do this a little bit more IFS uh, precise, um, it would actually be that the parts kind of take over myself mm -hmm. and then I see through them. Yes. And the world so, looks different through the, the different glasses and you see different options and yes. it's an options you just won't see anymore. Exactly. So that would be kind of this level one is if I look at this, I may see, don't even see certain options because mm. my parts cannot even see them. Yeah. So the second 
B would be the strength, which is literally what we talked about last time. So for me, that would actually be what, um, what fits in here. So the drawing for this would be the drawing we had last time with a certain layers of which parts are there, which parts are burdened, etc. cetera, mm. would actually be figuring out my strengths and resources. Right. Um, so that's, this would be the B. And say a bit more about resources. I know we didn't really touch on it in the previous one, resources yeah. as in. So, so for me, a resource, actually the, the technical definition of resources, at least as it's used in the, the psychotherapies and the coaching I know is a resource is something that allows you to do something else. So, okay. a, so that's a resource. If mm. you have money, that's a resource. If you have time, that's a resource. But also if you have certain knowledge, that's a resource because me having advanced mathematical abilities allows me to, mm. to um, solve certain problems that other people can't solve. At the same time, my advanced mathematical abilities may not be the biggest resource for my relationship. Mm -hmm. So a resource is always a re resource relating to something. It's not okay. like something is a, we, we can't say, oh, this is your resource for everything. Because right. the same thing that is really good for something, maybe in the strength language, the same energy that is really good for something can be really horrible for something else. Mm, just quite context specific. Yes. So again, relating to your goal, what are your resources? Like what are the energies you have and how can you use them to fuel your path, mm. to actually take these steps towards the goal? How can you make them come from your resources rather than the parts that are really far out here that don't have a lot of energy as we as we talked about in our last video yes so maybe for those who haven't watched the video my idea is that we all have this self which is kind of our spiritual core and actually the self fuels our parts and the closer a part is to me to myself because I think we're all born with kind of different capacities and essences, the easier it is for my self, my, in other words, connection to God, my spiritual being, my whatever you want to call it, and the easier it is to actually be fueled by energy. And the further out something is, the more it drains me mm -hmm. to do certain activities. So that's the very short version. We talked a lot more about that last time. Right. So, so for me, that would be B. And that's, again, a going inside with the coach, figuring out how are you built? What are your, what are your strengths? Mm. And how can you use them? And then C for me would actually be, we have certain parts in us that are really vulnerable, that are really hurt, and that constantly need something. So different, in IFS terminology, these would be the exiles. I mean, yeah. other terminologies, there are, there are inner children, they, right. are, our, they are our hurt parts, whatever, whatever yes. your perspective on that is, our wounds. Yes. And in my understanding, it's these parts that at the core actually make up kind of the fuel for all of our beliefs for all of our perspectives come from this deeper place where we are actually hurt mm -hmm. and where certain parts of us are trying to deal with this past hurt and actually these parts fuel our motivations at least most of the time sometimes we have a motivation that is coming from a real vision and it's not about our own hurt right I, I would actually say in most of the cases, it's our motivation is coming from these parts. Hmm. And to long-term change, what am I oriented towards, actually takes me helping these parts. It doesn't have to be full-on healing, but it's actually making them less needy to, to actually help them get what they need to some degree so that suddenly maybe some of these parts can chill a bit 
And it's not like I, I constantly see the world through their eyes, but actually I can be more in my adult self and fuel my projects more from this self energy. I think oftentimes it needs the, it needs the healing here to do that. So what I'm hearing you say, and maybe I need to check with you, is this what you're saying is often when we make a goal, where we set a goal, we do it from a place of us that's a little bit unconscious. Mm -hmm. We think the goal is like, oh, this, if I can have that, it's going to be amazing. My life will be complete. But where it really is coming from is an unconscious place that we haven't discovered that needs a little bit of healing. And it thinks if I get that thing, my life will be complete. And as I go on this journey and I figure this out, like maybe the goal's going to change because now I've had a little bit of healing around this part. So lots of our motivations come from unconscious hurt places if we haven't looked there yet. Yeah. Is that what I, you're saying? Yeah, I would actually say that. And I mean, maybe just for you, for the listener, um, to me, there is a very clear qualitative difference in the energy or the motivation that I can feel. And I think for me personally, a lot of my projects and still to this day are infused with a mixture of, there is a certain level of inspiration and actually calmness where I have the sense of, wow, yeah, this is coming from from like a, an adult part of me that feels like this would serve the world or this is something I'm good at and I'm happy to share that. But there's also kind of an underlying uh, feeling and that's usually on one level more powerful. The underlying feeling is like, hopefully people will like me. Mm. Oh, what, what, I, I'm not sure if I can share this video because maybe somebody won't like it. And there are all of those layers of of motivation that are actually really powerful, mm. but they're not coming from my adult. They're coming from somewhere else. And in one way they fuel the beliefs because I'm like, I, I then suddenly start seeing the world through these lenses, but actually what's underneath the beliefs is this, are usually these really childlike motivations of, I really want somebody to love me. I really want somebody to see me. I wanna be safe. Yeah. How much how much of our business motivation is coming from this, I really want to be safe. Mm. And how much of that safety is a genuine, yeah, I'm as a, I'm taking care of myself, I'm safe. And how much of that is like a, <gasps> if the money runs out, something really bad will happen. Ah. Mm. And I think it's really important to get to grips with these deeper layers of motivation because they can really fuck with us and they can completely burn us out. Because the more that fear energy is in there, the number one, the less I will see options. <laughs> but yeah, al sure. also, um, the more I will actually be running on survival energy, which long term drains my body, which long term drains my nervous system, because I'm not running on like self energy, but rather on, yeah, on survival energy. On I fear. like the word, mm. yeah, fear. But I think it's it's actually deeper than fear because we can also have a genuine fear, but it's this survival fear. It's a survival energy. Like I need to do this or else. Yeah. And that particular fear is is hugely, hugely overpowering. It's it's it gets into this desperation and yeah. and all of that. And a, a just a little thought about you know these deeper underlying motivations um, that popped up for me is, I, I don't know if you know the Sedona method. Um, mm -hmm. That is a method also to release uncomfortable emotions and beliefs and a whole lot of things. And, and that method talks about the three things that underlies just about every want or every, mm -hmm. just about everything that's, that's on the top layer, on the service layer is wanting approval, wanting security, and wanting um, control. Mm. We think we can, you know, if I control it this way, then I'll be happy. So, and then the deepest, deepest layer that they talk about is wanting oneness or separation. It's like ultimately the wants that we all want that we don't not aware of is wanting 
oneness. And these other three core layers are above that, you know, wanting approval, wanting control, wanting security. So those things are the places where those unconscious motivations or, and like you say, in a child, or we can call it a, a strength with a wound or a, a burden, a part of the burden. There's, there's all of these ways to describe it and it comes down to those yeah. survival things. It's important for people to survive. So there's nothing wrong with any of it. No. It's just we have it. Yeah. And I, so number one, I'm not a huge fan of these um breaking things down into there are these three fears so there are these five the, because my, my experience at least is it's so much more nuanced than that is that in every person it's different and oh. i i don't like this these broad strokes of like it's always this it's always that because my experience is just that's not true like i actually consider that to be quite bullshit that it's always this one thing or always this other thing I think there are underlying threads, but I actually more, I find it more helpful to think of it, it's trying to protect us. And then we together can find out how is it trying to protect you? Mm. Rather than me assuming, oh, it's trying to protect you from. Because mm. I think for, if we, if we look at it as the second layer of coaching, where, where we go beyond the results oriented and we look at the inner world to figure out where is, for instance, this drive coming from? Or why can you not make certain decisions? And we take that dive inside to, to figure that out. I think the more open we can be, the more helpful it is because we can actually connect with the parts. Mm -hmm. So for me, I try to not assume, oh yeah, this is your, your these are your mummy issues or these are your whatever, yeah. which a lot of methods kind of assume. They have these maps of, oh, yeah, it, in the end, it's all your fear of death. And I'm like, how about maybe not? How yeah. about it, it could be right. your, your fear of uh, living? <laughs> yeah, of, of being alive. It could be actually your fear of, of a specific feeling that was so overwhelming in the past. Mm -hmm. um, it could, like, there are so many unique things that people are. Let, let me maybe just tell you one story of a client I had. Mm. Who, um, who had this feeling, and she came with me to me with that, with which was that time was running away from her always, mm. and we did that dive inside, and we kind of rather than oh so how would how do you want your life to look, and we we went okay where is that feeling coming from, and what we figured out there was a part in her that was convinced that she was 120 years old. Now, this client was 20, but this part was convinced that she was 120 years old, so she was going to die very soon. And right. was that a fear of death? Maybe. But actually, the important thing for that part to realize was not, you're not going to die. The part was like, oh, I'm not 120 years old? No, you're not. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. I always thought I was. So, so then something relaxed. Mm. So... I, I would have never guessed that. No. She would have never guessed that. It's, it, it's completely outside of even what I would have ever considered. Yeah. But, but that was what, uh, what her inner system was like. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think it's so important to be open and to actually get to know these parts. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Completely with you. Yeah. So maybe just to get back to this drawing one more time, just to wrap it up and then I'm really happy to hear your thoughts on it. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, so the really simple model I'm trying to make is there are these two layers it's of, of what I would consider coaching. There is the result layer. It's basically all about the outer world and there is the kind of inner coaching layer. Mm -hmm. And I would want to separate them. And for me, it's basically about, yes, on one level, coaching really is about 
helping people move, figure out what do I want? What are my options of getting there? And how do I do that? But oftentimes, oftentimes what we have to realize is that um, Our inner world is more powerful than anything we can kind of say of, oh, I want to do this. And if I have a certain part that's really terrified of something and constantly is moving my attention away, that will make it really hard to reach a goal, no matter how well I plan it, no matter how yes. much I try, because this is really, really fucking powerful. Mm. So a lot of times, when we are stuck on this outer layer, what we actually need to do is to be able to look inside, look into the system and to make that step away from how can you implement better? What are your options to, okay, so how do you see the world? Yes. What, what are your actual strengths, but also what are your weaknesses? And have we been trying to get you to do something that's a weakness of yours and underlying all of this what are your real motivations that are actually either pushing you towards the goal but also potentially keeping you away from the goal mm -hmm. because these parts will have energies that move away and the more we can actually take these parts get them on board and align them towards the goal by going inside mm -hmm. the easier actually what we will try to achieve on the outside will be. That's kind of my underlying model of thinking about coaching and trying to separate those two layers. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm, this is, makes it very clear, Lucas, because I think coaching can seem like it's all about just taking action, you know, jumping into action and figuring out how to get there and then just pushing harder or forcing ourselves or getting the whip out when we hit those roadblocks like no if I just try harder I'll get there or if I just get an accountability coach I'll get there or um, and and it can just be a whole nother layer that needs to be looked at is what's the stuff underneath so what we're saying really is or what you're talking about is it's the stuff in the subconscious all this other stuff is in the conscious it's like okay taking action is in the conscious like i'm i'm going to decide with my conscious brain here's the option here's how i need to get there my conscious brain or in fact it may be my unconscious that made the goal now my conscious wants to say well here's how to do it mm -hmm. If we haven't looked at the unconscious stuff that's not on the surface, there could be a few roadblocks. Yeah, that's basically the map I'm trying to make and I'm trying to make it really yeah. simple. Like my hope is that this map can, and it's not fully fleshed out yet, but that it can actually help, I think, coaches to understand what they're doing more. Because yes. I think what we actually do is very powerful and beautiful but we also need roadmaps to be able to think about it ourselves and mm. to support and to also explain what we're doing to others. And maybe even just this two layer model uh, can make that a little bit more clear. Mm. If, if nothing else, I... it makes it more clear to me. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, <laughs> I've, I've done lots of courses, but your drawings always, it's like it distills the essence. Mm. And now I have, little a few little elements that i can like okay yeah now it relates to that and to that and to that and if i get confused in my coaching i can go where in my model am i where's where's the issue here i i don't know where i am like okay oh wait we are here and and maybe we need to figure out something in this area over here i love yeah. it that you make it and, so easy to and understand. actually the, the beauty is also you can have really different methods for doing this so you may have a very different method for trying to look at beliefs than me. You may have a very different method for, for like looking at the deeper underlying motivation than me. Mm -hmm. 
obviously I think my methods are pretty awesome. <laughs> As do I. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, it's it's not about how you do it. It's just about do you have the skills to do it? And right. in my understanding, it's actually, I think what I see lacking most in the coaches I know is a clear understanding of strengths. And I actually think that's where the, where the Clifton mm -hmm. comes in because it offers a clear understanding of that. What are your resources? What are your strengths? Mm -hmm. And the second one is, I think, to work with the deeper layers of motivation. Like most coaches have an understanding of beliefs of that layer, but to understand how that is based on even more underlying um, kind of mm. hurt and yeah. trying to avoid certain things and trying to get certain things. Um, yeah. I think that's, that's something where if we have a certain understanding of that, maybe we're not even the people who always work with it, but we can, we can um, identify it and we can help people seeing roadblocks that are like two levels underneath the belief because it's actually the energy that feeds the belief. Yes. Um, I wonder what you think about this. Or maybe I want to bring in a little buzzword. Um, I don't always like buzzwords, but it's around Here these days. <laughs> uh, trauma informed. You know, there's trauma informed everything these days. There's trauma informed yoga. There's trauma informed meditation. There's trauma informed all of it because people are just much more aware of the impact mm -hmm. of trauma in our past. And they've started noticing that we don't get the results we want in meditation or in yoga because there's trauma in the person's past and we try and force them into a way of being that's never going to work for them. So it's almost to me like this starts moving towards we're much more aware that there's so much more to the person than the adult sitting in the chair saying, I want this goal. They may have had really tough time at three years old that hasn't been looked at. And that's what's going to be in the way. And we need to be aware of that. Yeah. I mean, so I personally, I'm a big proponent of that perspective. I actually do work with trauma and am part of a trauma-informed bodywork and certain things like that. Um, so I personally really think there is a lot to that perspective. And I mean, anybody who still has a model in which there is, there is uh, this, this conscious adult that is in charge has, I think, not explored themselves very much and not follow the modern research on how little our conscious self actually is in charge. Mm. Like it's, it's actually, I think quite, there, there's one, uh, yep, yeah, it's quite baffling when you even look at the modern cognitive science um, coming to grips with the fact that our conscious mind is, is <laughs> One, one cognitive scientist I really enjoy, Timothy Wilson has this picture of, we often have this idea of the conscious and unconscious mind being like the iceberg with 90% of the iceberg underwater and 10% being above water. I think we need to renegotiate that picture. It's more like the whole iceberg is the unconscious and the conscious mind is a little snowball sitting on top of the iceberg. So, <laughs> That's actually okay. the that's actually the the up to date research on how much of what is going on in our system is being handled by the unconscious, and in my understanding, trauma, both in a sense of shock trauma, like mm -hmm. where with certain things that happened in my body that have like created dis disorganization in my system, mm -hmm. but also in the and much more importantly in my understanding the the developmental trauma of what were the the experiences I had as a kid um, and more importantly than oh they weren't bad or something like that as children we learn to adapt to the world around us which is actually the most intelligent thing I have ever found anywhere basically as children we are sponges learning how to survive in the world we live in which means uh, the, the greater society but most of all the family we grow up in 
And we develop all of these really intelligent strategies mm -hmm. to deal with whatever we're there. If certain needs of ours don't get met, we learn to deal with the fact that our needs are not getting met. If there is aggression around us, we develop incredible strategies to deal with that aggression. And all of that is super smart. The way we do that, it may not be fully healthy because we live in a potentially unhealthy world, but we adapt to it in a way that's highly intelligent. Now, those strategies form the base for our personality that we then develop. So all the things we learn as an adult builds on top of the layer we've laid as kids. Now, if, for instance, one of the things I've learned as a kid is if I stand up for myself, I get punished, which is something that culturally more girls are experiencing than boys, but also many boys are experiencing. And if that's how I grew up, which is basically as soon as I say no, I get punished yeah and then i'm like i'm gonna build my own business where i show myself through advertisement how about i don't do that because everything i learned as a kid is actually telling me no so yeah. so i mean let me try to bring this back to the drawing because i think this is a very beautiful question you asked um Um, so basically I will then have very many parts that have developed strategies and see the world in a way to avoid being seen. And I will have lots of motivation of parts that want to stay safe, that are scared of being hurt again, that actually are still carrying the pain from the past of being hurt that will fuel these parts that are like, no, stay safe. Um, and all of that will be in my system and it will actually, for me to then try and push through, try and just, no, I stay more accountable. No, I just make the wish bigger, takes a shitload of energy. Whereas as soon as maybe this part realizes, oh, wow, I'm safe. And this part can stop constantly looking for danger. Mm because it's constantly looking for danger because this part feels not safe, maybe then taking these steps would actually become a lot easier. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I think you just summed it up so beautifully, exactly what goes on and why we need this model. It's to understand all the things that are going on and it's not simply a journey of let's take some action and get to our goal. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fantastic model, Lucas. I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to do with it and, and how it's going to be useful for people. I'm, I'm just sure that this conversation in itself, just understanding it like this, whoever gets to listen or look will already have a, um, a wonderful, rich understanding of all the bits that's not on the surface that, that plays a role in our lives. Yeah, and thank you for listening. I think I got clearer on how to present this also more efficiently i was a little bit all over the place today but this yeah. is me me trying to to learn how to talk about this and didn't feel all over the place to me it's okay like to you... me to me i feel like i'm i'm, I'm not yet as succinct as i want to be okay so. okay well i interrupted you a lot too with questions <laughs> that's, that's happened uh, it's it, it was very useful for me Thank you so much for this. Uh, is there anything else you'd just like to say in closing or does it feel complete? I'm, I'm fine with this. Like this feels helpful. I can really work on this more. And I'm very glad to share this because I think it's, yeah, I'm trying to really create this model as a very simple way of thinking about what do we do? What are the skills we can develop? And why might somebody be stuck? That's actually what I'm trying to develop. And my hope is to then potentially also share some some just like some courses on how can people work on this inner world more clearly because that's kind of my expertise yes. um yeah but i i personally always need a map to be able to explain things to myself and to others to be like this is why we're doing this and that's yeah. what i'm working on right now yes and it's a lovely map i love it so much and i love what you pointed out there is why are we stuck let's look at the 
the yeah. stuck because it's easy when things flow and we make a goal and we go go on our way it's like how nice is that but that's not usually how it works so yeah. what's the stuckness and that's what we need to understand mm. yeah Fantastic. So thank you very much Liesl. yes thanks lucas it was just a, such a pleasure thank you so much for your time hmm.